California. This is Dre's Geek Philosophy, the August 20th edition. The I'm tired edition. <laughs> I am I am beaten down. I am I I I have not prepared at all for today. Uh, more so than usual. <laughs> Cause man, I worked all weekend. <laughs> and I worked all morning today. <laughs> I busted my brown ass. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I get that get the, those fat checks mm-hmm. to keep the car running. What's up, Ryan Tanaka? Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. We, uh, we are on all of our platforms. We are recording the audio. We are recording video on both of our streaming options. So there's lots of ways to watch. Remember, this is an interactive podcast. We encourage you, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, if you're watching us on Twitch, please interact with us. Please ask questions uh, if they're pertaining to the topic or if there's something you want to talk about and I feel it's... Uh, pertinent to what we want to say or if I feel I have some feelings or emotions about it yeah we could talk about this this is, this is an interactive show I, always, I want to emphasize this if you're listening to this if you're one of the 70 people that listened to this this past weekend uh, uh, that's the crazy thing yeah I, I was almost gonna save that for what I learned this week I learned that a whole lot of people will listen to our podcast more so than normal <laughs> normally we average maybe a lot like 20 listens a week you know 23 25 somewhere in the 20 to 25 range yeah over the weekend saturday 33 sunday 33 today 15 i have maybe we're picking up steve maybe uh, sounds maybe, like it uh, a year and a half overnight success <laughs> <laughs> it, it's been happening where we're, things are moving hey Maybe more people are watching, more people are listening. The word's getting out there. So if you are one of those people listening on SoundCloud and you want to contribute, if you want to participate in this interactive show, watch us on Facebook.com forward slash Dre G Podcast. Like Mike Lee, like Ryan Tanaka. Watch us on Twitch.tv forward slash Dre GP Podcast if you want to participate on the show. So today, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. Okay. No. I do have a couple of things. I do. I, I always say that. I, it's like one of my favorite Japanese pro wrestlers likes to do that. Like when he, when he does a promo, he'll yeah. get up. He's like, I'm going to say three things. And then he'll say one obvious thing. He'll say some second thing. He's like, I don't have a third thing. <laughs> and he'll walk away. Uh, that's like his, his, his little gimmick. Three things. Me too. <laughs> he'll always yell, yell, yell that out. Yeah. So no, I actually, I actually do have a couple things. I just haven't written, written them down. So. People leaning, you're gonna have to ride along okay. in the chaos, which is Dre, which you've done for the last 83 weeks. <laughs> Give or take it here or there where, you, where, you, where you've missed the show. And obviously, yes, Sam Z is out, much like Guile from Street Fighter walked up to Sam and said, Go home and be a family man. Because if you've ever played Street Fighter, that's what, if you lose to Guile, yeah. he tells you that to go home and be a family man. And so, yeah, I, I visited Sam Zia today. I, 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 I swung by his house, yeah. paid him a visit, hung out with his little baby, hung out with his, his lovely stepdaughter. We talked about Pokemon. And, uh, nice. yeah, it, it, it was a nice little morning. After my, my terrible morning, because I, I spent my morning in Burbank from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, ugh, abject rep, terrifying. Uh, you know, normally I like to talk about all the stuff I'm like. Today it was crackers. I was moving white people around. <laughs> I moved rice cakes. I was moving really frail white people around. <laughs> moving popcorn. No. Put puffy white people. <laughs> it was snack day, apparently. No. And we were just shuffling the whole goddamn store around. Oh, like, normally I move an eight to, ten, 8 to 12 feet of, like, product around. Yeah. Today was I moved, for me and, and my coworker and then two extra people they sent us, we moved 28 feet of store around. Damn. Fuck, that was a lot of fucking work. My ankles are killing me. <laughs> I, I cannot... I like to say I put my ankles in it. I can't put my ankles in anything right now. Can't do it. Yeah, I, I I'm exhausted. I will fall asleep at some random point oh, during man. tonight's show. It'll be hilarious. <laughs> so make sure to share to everyone. Let people know that Dre might fall asleep in today's episode. <laughs> and if we're lucky, that'll be the, the picture. That'll be the picture of me like mm, <laughs> crashing and burning onto the keyboard here of my laptop. There you go. So Sam gave me a topic. Oh, okay. Sam. Oh. Be, being Sam, well, I, was, I hung out, of course, obviously, I hung out with Sam, so I'm sure you're very concerned. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Sam gave us a topic. Yeah. Yeah. He is not here, but he, he will still influence the show a little bit. Yeah. Um, what has been happening recently? Like, a lot of people, this, this has to do with video games. Okay. Uh, a lot of people like to play old video games. Uh, illegal, oh, I, I will say illegally. Mm-hmm. You know, finding games online and playing them through emulators. But what has been happening over the past few weeks is Nintendo 
has been going out and serving cease and desists to all these websites. Nintendo has decided to just go after them now. Yeah. Uh, there's no, like all these websites are out there where you can download all the all the ROMs or as as the pirates like to say their backup copies. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is my backup copy of a rare game that's twenty thousand <laughs> that's twenty dollars. I can't speak today. Mm -hmm. Of this rare game I can't find. Yeah. And so there's all these backup copies. But what has been happening, yeah, they have been getting taken down. Yeah. Uh, the the big the biggest site, which I don't know if you want to be big when you're doing piracy, but yeah, especially yeah, <laughs> like a bit tor or a torrent, and all the torrents, yeah. <laughs> they, they've existed in perpetuity. The, and it's, I guess it's because it's all usually it's disconnected. It's people feeding in. But I guess these sites we're, we're hosting it. They're hosting like if you just then they give you instructions. If you want to play these games on your computer, get this program. Here's a link, yeah. <laughs> and here's all the games. Create the folders in your computer, and uh, you you can play them. But they're getting taken down. Like the the, the Two or three of the biggest sites have just shut, have been shut down completely. Mm -hmm. If you want to play old games that don't exist anymore, and, and that's and it's funny because there's that's Sam's argument because he may or may not have been doing something like that with a Nintendo product. You know, they, those are what's been happening. People have taken those NES yeah. classics and all Super Nintendo classics. It has a USB port. You can access the software. You can hack your little mm -hmm. Super NES or NES classic, mm -hmm. and you can put on games that aren't supposed to be there. That, that, that were not intended to be there. Yeah. And you can play all these other games. Oh, cool. I have my Nintendo or Super Nintendo control. I can play all these games. But now it's becoming very difficult. Unless you've already downloaded, like Sam, he's thankful that he's downloaded many, but now he's having trouble. He's having to go to like international sites. Oh, wow. uh, I showed him a cool little trick of Google Translate. <laughs> Where like you, you hold up the, the, your phone to the, uh, to the website, you can see what they're saying. I mean, I'm sure mo most websites can have like a Google Translate, but I want to trip them out. The science. science. <laughs> it was cool, really cool. Google Translate. You just hold it up and be like, oh, it translates everything for you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it helped me out a lot when I was playing some Japanese games recently. I was like, <laughs> hold up my phone and says, okay, press start. Son of a bitch. I could have figured that one out. So yeah, it, it's really crazy. It, you know what? And I, I don't know. I walk the line yeah. when it comes to this stuff because some people are like, oh, they want to defend it. Like, oh. Uh, it, it's not piracy. It's not illegal. Blah blah blah. You know, some of these games, some people can't don't have access to them. Some of them are very rare. Like if you want to play Ducktales two, <laughs> that game's like a thousand dollars if you want the cartridge. Wow. Because it was because yeah. that game. The, the, There's a lot of the, there a lot of these games that came out near the end of the uh, the life cycle of the NES mm -hmm. when the Super Nintendo was already out, and then they were not printed in very high quantities. Oh, gotcha. And so they're, they're, yeah. I, I, as you know, my friend, in the in the world of comic books, anything that is collectible. Scarcity increases value. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, if, if it's something that people want and it's in demand, so all these like NES collectors trying to find these these games. That's that's the tough one. That's why there's this game called Stadium Events. It's like the most valuable Nintendo game of all time. It's like twenty thousand dollars because Jesus. there's like only like twenty or thirty of them in existence. Damn. And it's it's yeah very valuable. And if you're one of those crazy hardcore collectors, mm -hmm. you you want it in your collection. Like uh. This guy I know, Stephen Reese, the, the guy with the Doctor Who tattoo. Mm -hmm. He has a whole bunch. Like he has a humongous game collection, and I believe he had. I think he, he he finally acquired a copy of that. He got one without a box, which severely lowers the value. Like if you have one complete in box, and that's like twenty thirty grand. That's there, crazy, there, there, was a, there was a there was a there was a I remember there was a documentary on Netflix about a guy trying to complete the entire NES collection. Yeah, <laughs> and that that was the last one. Mm -hmm. and it was very difficult. He 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 gave himself a, a time limit, but he couldn't do it. And he gave himself a time limit, a budget, but he couldn't do it. And like later on, he he saved up his money and he bought it. But at the end of, at the end of the documentary, he found someone who had two copies and was willing to part with one to him for the for the for you know for the value of the, of the game. Yeah, and it's it's insane. And but me, I unfortunately because I've worked for Nintendo, I'm very biased. I will always I. I I, in this one instance, I will side with the corporation. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it is illegal. I mean, mm -hmm. Nintendo still, uh, much to the chagrin of many gamers and much to the delight of others, they will still put out versions of their games. Yeah. And they will charge you $5 or $10 for them, which to some people would seem very obscene. Uh, it was no less than uh, maybe 15 years ago. They were charging people 30 bucks to play those games on the, on the Game Boy. <laughs> Wow. You wanted original Legend of Zelda. Mm -hmm. You can play it on your Game Boy Advance, but it was it would set you back thirty bucks. Damn. The, that was the first time. That was one of the many. One, well, not the first time. One of the many times mm -hmm. they repurposed a lot of their old, all all, all their old uh, their IPs, their old intellectual properties. Yeah, yeah. And so they've kind of they've controlled these in perpetuity. 
So that, that's where I'm like, you know what? If you want to play, I, I'm always silent, like, play it legally. Because you never know when Nintendo's going to knock on your doorstep. And then all of a sudden you're in this heap of legal trouble because there's all that legalese. It is technically illegal. I, 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 as a brown man, I'm afraid <laughs> the police. of being in trouble, being a police. <laughs> the police. I'm afraid of going to court mm-hmm. just because I want to play some video game. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I do not want to be a convicted pirate. I do not have one eye. I do not have a peg leg. <laughs> I, am, I am not a man in love with the sea. <laughs> I, but yes, yeah. it... it I think one of the I think one of the reasons why Nintendo is really cracking down suddenly is because they're coming out with a new online service yeah, well, you, this September for the Nintendo Switch, where you can stream all that stuff. You'll right? be able to stream all those. Well, not all of them, but yeah. they're going to have a selection of NES games if you're willing to pay the twenty dollars a year. Oh my God, twenty dollars a year! <laughs> if you pay twenty dollars a year, yeah, you'll be able to stream or play those old classic games. And so I think they're really cracking down to like. Because that's what corporations do. I yeah. Mean, that Nintendo is like, it's funny because like uh, for some people, Nintendo is like the you know, this white knight that everybody loves. Like oh, they, they they love their fans. They take care of their fans. But to many other people, they're 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 this demon that goes after everyone and shuts everything down. They're like, they they shut down fan projects. They shut down any pirate. They they, they go after they they will go after you. Yeah. If you do something to impugn them, to defy them, they will get you. I used to always talk. About the Nintendo Ninjas will find you. Back in the, 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 the DS days, there was, a, there was this little, you can get a cartridge with an SD card. Oh, go download all the, all the DS games illegally. That's lost money to Nintendo. That's lost money to publishers. And because I, I understand the plight of a developer or a publisher. They, they, they put all this money into making a game, and then Joe Asshole was like, fuck you, I'm not paying 40 bucks. I'm buying it. I'm going to get it for free. Yeah. It, it, it's not fair to these people who've worked that if they, that they, that they don't get their money back because... What's really happening a lot, I've mentioned this probably no less than 50 times out of the 80 episodes, is like the game industry is really kind of imploding upon itself where there's all the big companies are only making big games. Yeah. Small companies are making really tiny independent games and there's nothing in the middle anymore. There's no like, oh, there's this really good game that didn't take freaking 100 million to make. <laughs> Everything's either like super crap, super small or super gigantic, like a Call of Duty, like a Kingdom Hearts, like mm-hmm. a... Like all these big games that require you know a lot of money to create because these systems get bigger and bigger and, and crazier. So it, it, it's a very it's a very delicate uh, web that's weaved. Well, I mean, it's it, it's real similar to if you think about it, it's very similar to like the pirating problem in movies, mm-hmm. where you know like studios are, aren't taking chances anymore. They're doing they're doing sequels, they're doing remakes. Oh yeah. They know what what worked, and you know because of, because people are pirating everything. It's you know you're not making money on yeah the the, the the return on investment is yeah. is really tough you know, they they spend they spend and spend it's, it's all on all these entertainment mediums like, yeah. again, like we talked about last week you know it's like people's value of things continues to fluctuate where some people are willing to pay and some people are not mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know I feel like there's this, especially if in games there's always this there's this perception where gamers are like oh yeah no one should have to pay to play a game it's like no. Yeah. Like, or because every time that the NES Classic would be sold out, you see some asshole on some you know comment thread on just, Twitter. Just, I mean, just download. Oh it. yeah, just get a Raspberry Pi. Just download all the games. Yeah. And it's like, no asshole. <laughs> that that that, that sh- that's not a solution. I mean, that shouldn't be a solution. Yeah. And I think your average person does not know how to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> it's funny to think about. It, it's like oh. These, these, a lot of these, you know, hardcore gamers think, oh, everyone can do this. It's like, no, not everyone. Well, one, not everyone understands how it works, mm-hmm. and two, it's like to walk through instructions. It, what did I see? I saw something today at work, which made me think about that. Like the the, the gap in technology, like, you know, especially if someone's in their forties or fifties or sixties, it's like they can barely operate a fucking cell phone. Yeah. What makes you think they're gonna be able to buy this, you know, crazy USB thing, connect it to their TV, connect to the computer? Download all these programs, put them in the, in the correct files, even though there's instructions there. Mm-hmm. You can't do it. Yeah. People are getting dumber. I, <laughs> yeah. As our technology advances, people are getting. I, 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 an argument I've always made. As things get easier for us, people are getting dumber. So it's not as it's not as simple like all these, these assholes on on, on common threads. Oh, you can just uh, 
download just download it. just uh, download the games. Like it's not that simple. Like, I saw Sam going through a French website earlier today trying to figure out that he downloaded a game and it didn't work. Yeah. There, there, there's there's a frustration and people are willing to pay to not be frustrated. That's yeah. why last month the NES Classic was the highest selling console. It beat the PS4, it beat the Xbox One, it beat the Nintendo Switch because it's simplicity. People want convenience. Like all these, uh, you know, all these gamers are like, oh, why, do, why are people paying that much for 30 games when we can get them all for free? It's like, because free does not actually mean free. Like yeah. the, the time and effort mm-hmm. it would take to do that, it's the, the value proposition. It's easier for them to just pay 50 bucks or 80 bucks for the SNES one, plug it into their TV with a USB, uh, like plug in the HDMI port, plug in the USB thing, they turn the thing on and they play. Yeah. Convenience is king. And where all these people are, these crazy psychos will go out of their way inconveniently to circumvent everything. Mm-hmm. It's funny sometimes, like, oh, they talk about, oh, they did. Oh, just download it. Like, they have to build these crazy expensive like, you know, PC rigs. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it's not, not necessarily expensive because some oh, I'll, I'll just buy everything online or uh, the right place. I'm like, only you know that. Yeah. <laughs> You're average person. Like, that's why I've never built a PC. I have no idea where to start. Yeah. You know, I'll just go buy a crappy laptop. <laughs> One that's pre-made. It, it's uh, it's crazy, but yeah, I get it. But Sam's Sam's argument, since since Sam is not here, I will play the role of Sam. Mm-hmm. Sam's argument for piracy is that a lot of these games are fading out of existence, or the physical technology. It's gonna biodegrade and break down over time. These old cartridges, if they're not taken care of, like we're already seeing some of these things no longer existing. We can't. Certain games cannot be reprinted or brought back because licenses. Yeah. Like you, uh, the Disney license. You know, they're, they they maybe they can't. Re- they don't want to reprint Darkwing Duck. Maybe they don't want to redo some old stuff from back then. Maybe like the the whole reason uh, that James Bond Goldeneye game. It took forever to get that redone because oh that license passed from because Nintendo had the license back when the, the game came out on the N64 and it moved on to to other companies. They wanted where EA had it and then the EA had to make a deal with. MGM to get that up and running and create a different golden eye. It was just yeah. It's a bigger headache than people realize. Some people think that you can just wave a magic wand. But, All right, cool. This game is available. No, there's people who have to be paid at the end of the day, unfortunately, for the control of these licenses of the of the games. Mm-hmm. See, Nintendo doesn't have that problem because they control all their all, all their major stuff. They control it with themselves, much like Warner Brothers yeah. has control of all the characters. Where Marvel has that problem, where oh. They farmed all the characters out in bad licensing deals that they lose control over yeah. unless they can negotiate or have to purchase yeah. the company to get it purchase back. It, the whole company. <laughs> you have to buy Fox to get back. What was things? You're gonna buy Sony to those freaking. Yeah, all right. <laughs> when, when, when the PlayStation Five tanks and then uh, Sony isn't making money, like ah, we'll sell you back Spider Man now. <laughs> Give us all the money, Disney. And that and that's uh, it. It frustrates me. To, to a certain degree, but Sam does have a valid point in, in the interest of preserving things, because you know the Library of Congress preserves a lot of text, a lot of stuff. You know, uh, movies are preserved as well, but games, because they are a different type of medium, people, you know, a lot of people still dismiss video games. Yeah, it, it, they're still dismissed as, as children's toys, even though it's clearly been proven through Twitch, through all this other stuff, through all these video games. Like the, the, they're they're a phenomenon. They're a part of our culture. They are a valid form of entertainment. And as we've devoted an entire episode before, it is a valid form of art. It is a, for, a form of expression when these creators create these games for people. Mm-hmm. But they're not being preserved. Yeah. I mean, like Nintendo is obviously preserving their history, but there's a litany of other games when when uh, developers go down, when publishers go out of business, who's preserving the history of these games? Yeah. And no one knows. And it, Sam argues that these people who have these ROMs, you know, oh, if we keep them and preserve them digitally, then they can live forever. But if we, if we don't do that, then how will someone 100 years from now play the game if these, you know, pirate versions don't exist? Hmm. And it's tough because there, there's no... And then for all these companies, there's no value proposition to keep these stuff yeah. a- available. Like, or to try to get access to stuff that would be inaccessible. I mean, GoldenEye 007, mm-hmm. which is, would be problematic at best to acquire the license. You know, old cartoons, because there's certain games that were based on licenses that, oh, you wouldn't be able to get anymore because that company went out of business or that you know, the, the control of that license is in someone else's hands. Yeah. Like, let me, let me give you a for instance. I mean, there's these old Star Wars games that were on the Super Nintendo, which were a whole lot of fun. And uh, 
LucasArts, I, I'm not sure, what, they were republished on, on, on the Wii through the Virtual Console, but going forward now, LucasArts is owned by Disney. Yeah, they're probably not going to go for that. Who knows? Yeah. If, if Disney's going to be like, oh, wait, we got we have to share all this money with Nintendo? No. We'll create our own game service and put it out. like, And they'll just put it off down the line. Yeah. And, like, they'll want to control it. Oh, Star Wars. You know, before, Lucas Films or, you know, just Lucas was like, oh, freely, you know, everything used. He allowed all those parody movies to be made. Yeah. He allowed yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. But, unfortunately, because of the mouse controlling it now, it's a little bit... Uh, it's a little more tenuous. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure the mouse is very displeased with the that Star Wars Battlefront game that came out recently. That was very maligned by the internet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, you're hurting. You're hurting the value of our brand mm-hmm. on video games. So it's stuff like that where it's like stuff is beyond our control. Unfortunately, these giant corporations controlling everything, and now it's like we're down to like four or five corporations <laughs> controlling yeah, everything. Basically. So it's making things more difficult. Where they they they. they Everyone wants control. It's all about control. Mm-hmm. That's what people think. Uh, a lot of times, it's about greed. It is greed, but I think most of the time, it's about control. Yeah. Who controls it? So, yeah. and that's like something. It's code. Yeah. See right there. Jai Polder on Facebook Live says, "Sega doesn't have the code to re- reverse engineer this game." Panzer Dragoon, the Sega Saturn, uh, a system which had a very jaded. Uh, it didn't last very long. They, they surprised launched it. Like you know, most video game consoles. You know, you announce, oh, coming out next year, yeah. the Sega Saturn. No, what they did was, like, they, they showed up to the Electronic Entertainment Expo. It's like, Sega Saturn, out today. Wow. Like, the equivalent of, like, the yeah. when Kirkman put out that book, it's out today. Go buy it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they did that. Yeah, it, comic books, like, that's fine. That was a good, cool little stunt. Video games, uh, yeah. <laughs> Surprise launch. Uh, that, that's, that console failed, but there's a few games on there that were really good. But they're very rare because mm-hmm. the, the, the system was a failure. Like uh, in the earlier comment, Jai Baldur on Facebook Live said, "There's only five thousand copies of the game." Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sega and he said Sega can't even reverse engineer it because mm-hmm. it, it, some people think, "Oh, it's just a simple. You just grab the game and you make a copy." But no, it's no, it's it's a, so many zeros and ones and equations and and things. It's it's really advanced math. Yeah. Especially since technology changes so often. Yeah. You know. It does. Like the, 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 what could be read five years ago, when your computer couldn't read today. Yeah. I, I went through that. Uh, the one time I, I recorded, the, the I busted out my old camcorder. I don't, I don't know if you were there for that episode. Mm-hmm. I busted out my old camcorder and I recorded the episode. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll just upload it to YouTube from my camcorder. Oh, the camcorder is from 2008, 2009. It should be fine. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, no, my, 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 my other laptop couldn't even read, like, what is this file? Yeah. It's like, it didn't even, it, it didn't even know how to read the file. Yeah. I, I, technology advances and stuff gets left behind, and so a lot of these video games are being left behind. So I understand that part of the argument. Like, as far as, like, rare stuff like that, yeah, I think it would be cool if there was a way to preserve them without breaking laws. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see if there's some sort of, you know, like me, I'd like to find the middle ground. Well, how can we do this without pissing the most people off? Let's piss off, piss off the least, least <laughs> of people. Do you think this, uh, this streaming idea is going to be some sort of middle ground? It kind of is. I mean, yeah. we're getting access to a lot of these Nintendo games. Especially if, over the course of time, a Nintendo allows access to all of their games, or if they get deals with a lot of these third parties, where they go to Capcom and get all the Mega Man games on there. Yeah. But Mega Man's like, no, we want to put all the games on the disc and make our money. There's a, and then there's the control and the greed. You know, oh, I want to make all the money I can from this. Yeah, it's it, it's a it's a tough it's a tough nut to crack, and that's a I, I I really did, yeah. When Sam put that in my head earlier today, I was like, I, I ruminated about that for a little while. I'm like, oh, you know, this is, this is something that has legs with it. We could talk about here on the show. If anyone has comments, either our viewers on Twitch, our viewers on Facebook. Remember, this is an interactive show. Please mm-hmm. comment like Jai Paul Alder has on Facebook Live. So. The other, the other, it's funny, the only thing that I know about the Sega Saturn is so there's a, there was an old uh, independent comic book called the, the Scud, the Disposable Assassin. That's right. And there was a video game. There was game. a Sega Saturn game. Yeah. I remember seeing that game when I worked at GameStuff. Yeah. The old place across the street from old Comic Galaxy. <laughs> and uh, it was really cool because like, that, just, that just had an anniversary a couple years ago, well, mm-hmm. five, three years ago. And they put together this big uh, collection. And there was ads for that video game ah. in the back of the in the back of that book. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, that was that was a game that was made for the Sega Saturn. I don't think it was made for any of the other consoles. No, no, yeah. I don't think it was on because uh, at that point the the, the 
would have been either the N64 or the PlayStation 1 as the, the equivalent or the, the, the console peer or the generational peers of the Sega Saturn. It was kind of in this kind of weird in between. Yeah. In between phase. Yeah, the, the, there's stuff like that. Like, yeah, who. Uh, who would they have to go through? Whoever made that game, or the, the guy who made Scud Disposal, they'd all have to agree upon if that game were to be re-released on, yeah. a, on a, via streaming or what now, like, with, which is a thing now. People are streaming it. Uh, I know Sony's been trying to really do it where you just stream your PlayStation 2 games or even PlayStation 3 games. You stream them through the internet. Like That seems really cool. And it goes back to my paranoia. I'm like, what if we have no internet? <laughs> like me, like at home, my internet goes down frequently because Charter hates me. And so I'm always like, I need to be able to play it offline. I, I need to be able to offline with this. I, I want to be able to have access and still keep playing. Mm -hmm. that, that's just my, my paranoid thinking. Yeah. Man. But you know who wasn't paranoid? Who's that? Joe and Anthony Russo. Yeah. Because you know what, my friends? You know what came out on Blu-ray last week? You know what Dre has watched and, and absorbed and thought about? Avengers Infinity War. And now we have reached... The, my, my personal spoiler the spoilers it, no more spoiler alerts we've reached the statute of limitations as far as I'm concerned if, if you haven't seen it yet you're not gonna watch it right? yeah exactly <laughs> if you haven't seen it by now Ryan Tanaka on Facebook Live I'm on my 28th viewing exactly right if you haven't seen it by now you don't wanna watch it don't be like oh spoilers yeah no uh, the first thing I wanna talk about in regards to Infinity War was the fucking Balls on Joe and Anthony Russo, <laughs> and uh, and I don't want to leave out uh, the, the two screenwriters whose names I can never remember, yeah. uh, McFeely and uh, oh, Marcus, I believe, are their last names. Yeah. The balls on these guys <laughs> to kill Loki in the first ten minutes. Big fucking set of balls. Yeah. It also hurt my soul that Idris Elba also died. Yeah, but the balls on them to just feel like you know what? It just it, it really. Set the table. It really lets you know the temperature in the room and yeah. like, oh, Thanos is not fucking around. <laughs> Ryan Tanaka says, is he dead? Oh, he's dead. Oh, God. He's dead. Like, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I know they killed him at the end of Avengers. I know they killed him and at the end of, of Thor Dark World and then showed he was still alive at the end of that. Yeah. I mean. See, the, the thing with Loki killing him off, he has that fan base. There's a huge... Ladies <laughs> love. Left hand knife strike, he's right handed. Oh! The balls. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, like, yeah, he's got that fan base. But ladies love Tom Hiddleston. And he is a pretty man. I am more than secure enough in my sexual, <laughs> well, freaking masculinity yeah. to say that that is a beautiful man. <laughs> and then on top of that... That's a lot of beautiful people. <laughs> on top of that, you have... Realistically, he's the most successful villain of the MCU. Yes. Because he, he, you know, he keeps coming back. He yeah, keeps coming back. He keeps coming back. Oh, no, he died at the end of Thor, not the end of Aven yeah. Avengers. He just got sent back to... Yeah. He got sent back to Asgard in, in, in his in his S&M gear. <laughs> in his Asgardian S&M gear. Mm. I'm sure that made a, lot of, made a lot of people quiver. Made him a little wet with perspiration. But, but yeah, but see, he's, he's been, like, the, the biggest threat. And to take him out first just shows, like, oh, no. Like we're done with that. <laughs> oh no, that's like this, 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 this is what's this is how it's gonna go. Yeah. And now poor Idris Elba. That that one hurt me. That actually that one hurt me a little bit more. Yeah. Because I've been waiting for Idris Elba to get to do something. Like in Thor Ragnarok, he got to kill a bunch of dudes. Yeah. And he got to swing sword around, but like he really didn't get to do much as Heimdall. Yeah. For the most part, he mm -hmm. got to look kind of drunk in freaking Avengers: Age of Ultron. <laughs> that's right. He's blind or whatever. He's right? blind. Ah, yeah. uh, I can't see anything, Thor. <laughs> Odin's son, I know nothing. I see nothing. Like, honestly, it, I, I personally feel that that was a waste of Idris Elba. Yeah. In, in all of the movies, they wasted such an awesome dude. Mm -hmm. or, or hopefully, uh, uh, oh, where, the, uh, where is the other, the other Guardians? You know what? I have a, a, one of my biggest questions of that first 10 minutes, just the first 10 minutes alone. Where the fuck is Valkyrie? Yeah. Where the fuck is powerful and beautiful Tessa Thompson's <laughs> Valkyrie in all this? Yeah. Did, 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 did she die? Did she jump in a ship? Did she did she grab a Neek and freaking Corrigan and, and Corrigan and just hey let's ju let's go jump in the ship maybe we, maybe we'll get out of here that's a big that's a big ass ship I think we should go. Well uh, yeah I would assume that like 
Because there's that whole chunk of time where we, we don't know what happened between the end of Ragnarok and the beginning of. Uh, it's, it didn't seem that long. Well, I mean. That, that chunk of time does not seem very long, my friend. Well, that end of like, hey, look. It's the goddamn freaking. It's, it's, it's Sanctuary 3. And then we start Avengers Age of Ultron. Bah! Everyone's dead. Half of the Asgardians are dead. Yeah. Where the fuck is Valkyrie and all this? What the fuck? I, I, I feel like it's... What, they couldn't throw her a bone? We had 28 <laughs> Avengers? We couldn't have her? We couldn't have Taika Waititi get into a, into a fucking ADR booth and be like, holy shit, half the, half the Asgardians are dead. Isn't that terrible, Nick? I think that's pretty awful. <laughs> I got Irish at the end, though. Yeah. I'm terrible at impressions. But I, mean, I feel like they, they probably, you know, help half the other Asgardians escape, right? I mean, they, they I have, would hope so. Yeah. When, we get, when, when we get Thor Ragnarok again. Yeah. <laughs> Ragnarok and roll. Right? Ragnarok and roll. Also directed by Taika Waititi. It better, they better bring his fucking out. That was the fucking best Thor movie. Ever. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Goddamn movie. I've watched that movie a lot. But the first ten minutes, I'm yeah. still like, and the, the Hulk gets his ass beat in. Yeah. It's his ass beat. It's, it's never happened. It's never happened. No. No! I mean, they got close with Abomination, right? But mm-hmm. that was still, he was still. He was close. I mean, he, was still, he was still learning. He was still learning how to. He was still learning to be Hulk, and, you know, maybe uh, the, the, the Hulk Buster kind of put him down. Yeah. <laughs> it took a lot, though. I mean, it took everything that Tony had, like, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> I mean, he dropped a building on him, and, like, he still got up. Buy this building. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Ryan said, I yeah, did half the surviving. Uh, I would assume that that's the, yeah. that's the, the modus operandi. Of, of, uh, <laughs> oh, Marina Mesa, there's a theory There's a theory that the Hulk is really Loki And that's why he got beat To the shift again like, oh. mm. I, I like the I, I mean, There was a running theory that I really liked That he's just, he's scared He got, he got beat up by, by Donald yeah! he's like, he, he doesn't want to come if out You're either. the strongest one there is And you got your ass <laughs> beat And then yeah, then the, there's also a thing I, I haven't had a chance to watch yeah. the Because apparently it's digital only There's a director's round table yeah, yeah. I haven't got to. Uh, it was only on the uh, on, on the digital copy, which I haven't downloaded onto my, my phone over there. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh shit, I gotta watch that. But they, yeah, they, so they talk about how like it's not they scared. It's just that they, there's the Hulk is trying to take control of like he wants to be his own person or something. And it's like that's yeah, really weird. No, well they're the writers. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, uh, like, Jai says he doesn't buy the explanation, but unfortunately, my friend, that's the explanation. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> they created the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they did. Hold on, let me do this. It's not real. <laughs> as, as people always ask, a lot of friends will ask me about why the motivations of characters. It's at the hands of the writer, and in this case, the writers and the director, yeah. that they steer the motivation. We can sit here and speculate what the, but if that's what they say, mm-hmm. then that's what the, yeah. that, that, that's what it actually is. Like that, that's, that was their motivation when they wrote it that way. Yeah. And uh, it's like, oh, I don't buy it. I'm like, nope, that's, that's just that's what it is, though. And you see that there's this other fan. Yeah, I'm also made a kid. <laughs> you see that there's another fan there. Right? A lot of people like they want to keep Loki alive. Oh yeah, of like, course. Everyone wants How to keep Loki alive. How do I want to keep Loki uh, alive? He's uh, he's awesome. <laughs> but uh, another fan there I saw was that uh, someone took a screenshot of when uh, when Thanos is choking him, mm-hmm. and in the background you can see his shadow, and they're saying like, oh no, there he is. He's he's you know hiding in the back. <laughs> Oh, the, was it Star Lord's fault? You know what? If you had asked me uh, in May or <laughs> April, I would have said yes. Was everything Star Lord's fault? I will say now, no. Yeah. You know why? Doctor Strange. Oh yeah. It's the only way we're in the end game now. Mm-hmm. Motherfucking Doctor Strange used the time gem to look at a million <laughs> fucking possibilities and found the one where we win. Yeah. And. According to Strange, everything's look. Apparently, Tony was so important. He was like, wait, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't kill Tony Stark. <laughs> so, yeah, see, you know, uh, to go back to the Hulk topic for a second, Mike Kirk's going to if the Hulk doesn't want to fight Bruce's fights, then the Hulk, the, the Hulk, Bruce dies. Yeah. But the Hulk won't let Bruce die because they, they're intrinsically tied together. You cannot separate the two yeah. unless your name is Peter David. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, then, yeah, they even they, they, they established that in the movie too. He talks about how he put a bullet in his mouth and, and, uh, and he spit it out. The Hulk yeah, spit it the out. Hulk spit it out. <laughs> yeah. You have my respect. You have my respect, Stark. I will only kill half the human race. 
I only kill half of humanity. But it, yeah. What, what, what was I saying about? Oh, oh Doctor Strange. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you know what? It the, the story is as the story goes. I mean, like, yeah. Star Lord fucked up. Yeah. Star Lord punched him in the face. They almost had the gauntlet off, and I, I was really focused on that. But see, here, here's my question on that book. I, I, I watched that recently. I started thinking about, it. yeah, he fucked up, and he, he they almost got it off. What was the plan after that, though? Like they were just gonna like, like keep away. Yeah. He's still <laughs> fucking strong. Yeah. He's, he's still, still a titan. He's still the strongest person in the universe, according to everybody. Yeah. Right? He's still really fucking strong. Yeah. <laughs> I think he would have gotten even more vicious. Starts, you know, poor, Mr. Stark, I have a thing, and then you just see. <laughs> rip his head off. I mean, he had what one Infinity Stone when he beat down the Hulk. Yeah, he only needed the one. Barehanded, like he beat down the Hulk. Barehanded beat him. I don't know if he even used the Power Stone. Yeah, I didn't no. even see it glow when he beat his ass down. Because they put the beam on him. Yeah. So that, that was my problem with that. I was like, what the hell are they going to do? Like, what was the plan? Yeah, you, you got off him. Yeah, like, like, everyone's get out of here. Well, let's run. <laughs> Uh, maybe Doctor Strange would have been like, mm, made a portal, <laughs> tossed in the portal. I know not once it gone. <laughs> uh, uh, Ryan Tanaka asked you a question. Since Ego is gone, does Peter have residual powers? I don't know. No, was it the whole thing? Was it as long as the, the planet survived? He, he only had powers on that planet. Or right, and then he killed his dad, so yeah. clearly no more powers. There, there, there's the answer to your question using uh, Marvel science. The Marvel science. <laughs> No, but see the thing too, like everyone was talking about how like oh Star Wars fucked up, but you really think about it, if you look at like all the shit he went through, and then on top of that Gamora gets killed. Like, oh yeah, Gamora dies. He ha- he ha- it was it was bound to happen. <laughs> it's an emotional reaction. Yeah. And and speaking of which, I, I'm gonna have to agree with the honest trailer. Mm-hmm. Gamora had the best acting role yeah. out of everyone. She really freaking. Yeah. I mean, Zoe Saldana. She fucking killed it. Mm-hmm. Like just the, the the raw emotion of having to deal with her freaking her psychotic sociopathic father stepfather, yeah. <laughs> and just yeah, like the, 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 the earnestness of like I need you to kill me because like when I'm around him, yeah, she's like she can't do anything. I mean, like it's the guy who to say he saved her, he raised her, and it's like. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. I wanted to see the uh, Ryan talking. I want to see the siege of Xandar. You know what? I bet that's something got left in the cutting room floor. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was a lot. I, I, I wish know. they had put more deleted scenes. I watched the deleted scenes. I wish they had put yeah. more deleted scenes. I feel like that they're probably gonna make reference to that in like Captain Marvel or, or even mm-hmm. Avengers Four. Like, Show like Xandar get destroyed. We're probably gonna see the aftermath of it, you know, because I think that was really important, and then they just kind of like you know went over that. They just kind of like brushed over it. You know? Yeah. Like that's why on trailer was like they completely undid the events of the first movie. Like, yeah. oh yeah, you saved Xandar. Okay, Xandar's dead. Yeah. Uh, Jai Potter asks, okay, uh, I believe this is in response to like what would you do? I was like Would you rather fight base Goku or blue Goku? <laughs> Thanos with the glove is Goku blue. You know what? Thanos this, this is not <laughs> Dragon Ball. <laughs> no. Thanos is fucking powerful. Anyway, yeah, regardless, he's, like, he's the strongest being he's, in the universe. He's still right? one of the strongest being in the universe. It doesn't matter. One hand tied behind his back. <laughs> he's still pretty fucking powerful. It took all the combined effort of all of them just to kind of hold him still <laughs> for a minute. Yeah. For uno minuto, 60 <laughs> seconds. Poor Manson's like, hurry! <laughs> I used to control a planet, but I can't control this motherfucker. <laughs> it's true. She put a planet to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> go, go put the Thanos like that. You know, there you go. There's your power level comparison. Yeah. But see, that was the weird thing, though, because, like, I, I, that was the. I didn't, I he mean, didn't even have the Mind Stone yet. Yeah. He didn't even have the Mind Stone yet. <laughs> that was the weird thing about that movie, though. I, I think it was like. It was like they, they kept on pushing how powerful he was. Yeah, like, you had characters still, like, you know. You know Captain like, America catching these hands. Yeah. <laughs> I know like, that great scene where like it, it's so epic and cool where he's like he uppercuts him or whatever, but then Thomas is just like ah get out of here, right? He I mean just he literally walked through them. Yeah. <laughs> like he's like, all these Avengers are standing between him and Vision at the end, yeah. and he just like he, he's like Dave Chappelle walking through the club when everything's better in slow motion. He just like mm, get away from me. No, you out. No, okay, goodbye. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Yeah, like, Adorable. Blah. Like, he's like, he just like starts crushing Rhodey. <laughs> like, just, like, just, like, just like, ah. Nah, nah. Take your little toy suit. Get out of here, boy. 
Oh, get the fuck away, tree. <laughs> uh. there's, yeah, there's, a, there's a running theory that uh, it's all like a ruse or like Doctor Strange when he gave him the, the, the time stone. Uh-huh. Like it's, it's glowing. That means it's activated. Mm-hmm. And but so there's, there's a theory that it's like fake or something like that. No, but he reversed time at the end of the movie, so... Yeah, he's in control of time. He has now. it. Yeah, he has a time stone. Did anyone else notice the scales underneath Cap's torn uniform, like the comic? Oh, shit. No, I didn't see that. Oh, man. That's not cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a little old, old school nod to yeah. like, you know, that kind of chain mail that, yeah. that Cap you know, used to draw him with. Now that he's kind of drawn to solid now. Yeah. He's wearing Kevlar instead of chain mail, mm-hmm. like he used to. And I was, I was speaking of uniforms, you know, that little, the little uh, Easter egg of like, the, that one guy the Call Obsidian or whatever the guy yeah. with the big axe oh yeah he's got the he, got the, he has a sash of one of the, 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 the uh, of the Nova Force yeah. or, no, would the, it be Nova Force or would it be Captain Marvel yeah it's, it's the, I always thought it was kind of just like or, I guess it would be yeah, Captain Marvel it's like a Kree oh the, the Kree. Kree Kree thing yeah. so maybe uh, that's uh, like a little thing like Easter egg uh, let's see if the no- nerds notice that and yeah. they did yeah. once they were able to break down the movie frame by frame because yeah. I didn't notice I was too busy watching uh, that awesome fight <laughs> freaking Freaking Iron Man's bleeding edge armor. Yeah, that was really cool. They, they, that's the cool thing about these movies, man. They, they actually reference back to the comic book stuff, and then they, we, it looks like the comic book stuff. Yeah, you know? it really does. Like, yeah. where he's just like, okay, he just makes this freaking giant repulsor. Boom! Yeah. And he's like, liquid, this liquid metal fighting freaking Thanos, but barely keeping him. <laughs> like, all that effort for, for, for a single drop of blood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love how, like, that, that first meeting. Well, giant Potter is providing all these, like, Oh, internet things. Would you rather fight Jerry when he's fresh or at the end of the tournament when he is exhausted and been mentally broken? I'm like... <laughs> That's the same thing. <laughs> would I rather wipe my ass or not wipe my ass? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I, I, love, I love that, that meeting, though, between uh, uh, Iron Man and Doctor Strange. And, like, when they oh, first... Uh, so contentious. I love that whole scene when, like, when Doctor Strange, he, he turns off that tornado, uses mm-hmm. the magic to shut it down. He just gives Tony this little smirk, and then Tony's just like, ugh, and it rolls his eyes, like, this asshole, like... Oh, it was so perfect. Like, yeah. like, you have these like these two quippy, very similar... Cause yeah. A lot of people complain that Doctor Strange's movie is very much like Iron Man. Yeah. Like, hey, look, let's just put them together. Yeah. A couple smart-ass, really smart motherfuckers. <laughs> put them together, see what happens. And of course, of course, their chemistry is very, like, I'm, I'm the smartest guy in the room. No, I'm the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> see, I, I'm the protector of everything. <laughs> oh, I, I'm rich. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people complained about the fact that like he was just he was easy to accept like Doctor Strange as you know magic and everything. He's been dealing with Thor all this time. I mean, so I mean, you know, he he has a base understanding of this, of this stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it, 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 magic is just super science. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Lee tells us on Facebook like Jude Law will be Marvel. Mm-hmm. That's something. Oh wow, yeah. interesting. Hmm. Uh, like, we, well, it's, uh, March is not that well, February, or is it February or is it March uh, one's in March one's in February I'm, I'm not sure which is which because we know I know Shazam comes out one month and yeah one month and the other yeah. we have Captain Marvel one month and Captain Marvel the other yeah. one <laughs> <laughs> well comic book confusion for you there you go like, uh, yeah that like, there's so many things in it. it's funny I, I didn't realize that like Wakanda was in there, but like the, again, I keep referencing back to Honest Trailer because it was like, y'all, like, oh, the barely cursor because they didn't realize how big Black Panther was going to be. Yeah, that's true. That <laughs> freaking billion dollar movie. Like, oh, maybe we should have uh, <laughs> had a little bit more Black Panther, a little bit more Shuri. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. But, they, but they did have really cool moments. Yeah. I, I loved uh, I, I loved the line from, uh, what's your name? Uh, freaking the, the, the head of the Dora Oh, uh, yeah. I always yeah, forget her name. Yeah, me too. But it's like when. when yeah, you know, when freaking um, <laughs> Scarlet Witch shows up and just moves everything, why the hell was she up there the whole time? <laughs> That's a fair point. And that, that great scene with the, the, the two of them, her, <laughs> they fight, uh, what's her face? Uh, uh, Proxima Midnight? Proxima Midnight, yeah. like, you're gonna die alone. She won't be alone, <laughs> you freaking Black Widow. <laughs> like, oh! <laughs> and you know what's cool about the special features? Yeah. All those actors from Black Panther, like, they, like, they learned Wakanda. Like, they were, yeah. te- like, they were informing Russo both the Russos what the Wakandans would say like nice it was really yeah. cool, like watching like, like he's uh, Winston Duke uh, Mbappe yeah. <laughs> Mbappe yeah there we go Ryan right, Tanaka yeah. like he was there like he was telling them oh this, this is what the Wakandans would say it's like whoa yeah. they did they, they, Ryan Coogler that much you know yeah. created you know either found out whatever the old Wakandan language is in the comic or you know they made their own Wakandan language like yeah. 
like, yeah, oh, these are the battle cries. And like, yeah. And, so, and then the Russo like, cool. I mean, it was really good to have all this, all this information. That they, it was very authentic mm. to to them. And then G-Son. Thank, thank you, G-Son. Would you rather fight Kratos or Jerry from Tom and Jerry? Jerry's a fucking bastard. He, yeah. he won't die. Tom, Tom has spent his entire life trying to kill Jerry. That little bastard is impossible to kill. Yeah. He's worse than the Roadrunner. It's true. <laughs> In impossible to kill this, it's as right as a Jerry, then the Roadrunner, and then like Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Right, I, I, would, I would say in that order. Yeah. Hard to kill. Maybe Loki right around underneath there. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Tie it all together. <laughs> Man. And this, go on. No, no, no. Well, well, what are some of your thoughts of Infinity War, my friend? Oh, that's too much, man. It's, it's too many. <laughs> hey, you know what? That, that, that's another thing. Like, it's a lot of movie. Like, yeah. Ryan Tanaka, if you've really watched it 28 times, uh, that dude, that you, you have a strong will, my friend. Because, like, watching it the one, like, when I, I bought it this past, uh, I bought it this past Tuesday, watched it Tuesday night. Yeah. And, fuck, man, it's a lot of movie. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on, dude. There's no, like, low in that movie. Yeah, it's yeah, just... It's constantly just boom, 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 boom. I, I think I said that in our spoiler for your movie. It doesn't stop moving. You're yeah. just uh, like, this is a two and a half hour roller coaster you're going to be on. Yeah. And you better hang on and freaking strap in and because <laughs> shit's going to be happening. You better pay attention. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, they, they really did. There, there wasn't a lot of preamble. There wasn't like a. Yeah. There was cursory explanations. Oh, these are the Infinity Stones. You're fucked. Yeah. And it's like, we have two of them here. Okay, let's protect them. Fuck it. All right, let's go. Boom. Spider Man. Oh my god, I have a suit now. I'm a gunter. Easter egg hunter. <laughs> Look at, uh, yeah. Ready, ready Player One. Ready Player One. Thank yeah. you. My, my, my brain was. My brain had shut down on that one. You see, is the thing that. Like, okay. Why didn't Doctor Strange use the, use the time stone against the uh, Thanos? Thanos? I don't know. Yeah. I, I I would imagine. Here, here's me here, put my thinking cap on. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of hair up here. If uh, he didn't use time stone, because I'm sure he watched a lot of scenarios where he used the time stone, it didn't work. and it didn't work. No matter how many times he turned back time or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, let's just let's just rewind time and let, not let him get the Infinity Stones or whatever. It's like you can't really fuck with time that much. Yeah. If we've learned anything from Back to the Future. Yeah. <laughs> Time travel is very delicate. <laughs> yeah. Fucking with time. When you step on a butterfly, and all of a sudden dinosaurs are driving cars. Because <laughs> all of a sudden you're forced to make out your mom to make sure that you survive. <laughs> you're forced to Marty McFly. Oh, my mom! Ah! <laughs> time travel is, is very messy. Yeah. That's why I, uh, it, it, I feel. Dude, Time travel will never be invented because some motherfuckers from the future would have come here by now. Yeah, that's true. Some asshole in a, in a DeLorean or in a few years, a Tesla. Some asshole in a flying Tesla will show up and be like, hey, time travel exists. It doesn't work like Back to the Future. It's not good. Some shithead would have come by by now. Well, I know I, if I could get my hands time, I'd be traveling all over fucking time. I would be ruining everything. It was like hot to a time machine. <laughs> It'd be Drago. <laughs> Instead of Lugal, it'd be Drago. And this is, this is uh, I remember there was this great meme where it's like, you know, whenever you think about making a bad decision, as long as your future self doesn't come and stop you, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor young Dre. I would be going backwards in time. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, perfect. Look at Ryan Sanaka's comment. Post credits Deadpool 2. Yeah. It'd be. Yeah. It'd be like that. I was gonna, I was gonna say it'd be the kind of like James Bond straight right back, where I'd just be like going around. But it'd be me going backwards in time to myself. Dude, I see young me. Kaka! <laughs> like I don't go back to the first one. I'll just progressively go backwards <laughs> over time. Kaka! What's that for? You know? Why is there an old bald me with a giant goatee? <laughs> We're gonna write in the comic galaxy. Bah! <laughs> So, uh, let's see, oh, let me see G-Son's comment here. It seemed like the Avengers didn't expect the shitstorm coming. And was trying to figure out, like, chickens with their heads cut off. Well, yeah, because yeah. I, I don't think... I think it was just... Uh, it was very sudden. Mm-hmm. Even though, apparently, like, two years have passed since, the, you know, the events of Civil War. Yeah. Good God. And uh, the Scarlet Witch, in those two years, she lost her accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grab all the copies of DuckTales, too. Man, i go back in time and buy Apple stock. <laughs> I go right back to 1984, right when they're in the biggest amount of trouble, and that crazy ass David Lynch commercial comes out. I will take a hundred thousand on Apple, please. 
put in the name of Dumbass Cervantes. <laughs> in the present day, you just get this random letter in the mail. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dre, there's a fuck ton of money somewhere for you. <laughs> National Treasure 3, Dre gets, gets rich. And time is unraveled. Oh, shit. <laughs> Here we go. The... Lamar, the one Afro Ninja, joined us on Twitch. He's, he is mad that half of the population that Thanos took was mostly black. That's true. I mean, if we're gonna, yeah, so the biggest thing, I guess that would have been the biggest spoilers, were yeah. the people who got took in yeah. at the end of Avengers Infinity War. All the took in this. <laughs> and that's right. They did get most of the people what? of color. The only one that got left behind was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was Rhodey. Rhodey, yeah. Rhodey's the only POC that got left behind. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Because, you know, they got, obviously, Black Panther. Yeah. And he got got. He got, I mean, Falcon got got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was all about, well, he died in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Taking all the Black Avengers. Yeah. That's true. What the hell? <laughs> and we got, we had White Bread Avengers left over. We, we had the yeah. OG Avengers no. plus Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> plus Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> Fury! Fury, th- thank you, Ryan Tanaka. Nick Fury! Mm-hmm. Who, who got the, the closest we'll ever get to a motherfucker in a Marvel movie? These are PG-13. They got one. No. They got one. That. The master of the PG-13 fuck is, is Steven Spielberg. I've said it before. <laughs> he's the master. It just looks like he, he, he throws it like a, like a pitch. Like, he's, like he's, a, he's, a, he's a freaking expert pitcher. He just throws it right down the middle. Goddamn Bucky. Mm-hmm. Oh, Gamora. Oh, Gamora. Yeah, Gamora. Oh, she, she's a person of color. <laughs> Well, green. Yeah. In the movie, she's green, but that's still a person of color. All right, fuck Buck. Oh, goddamn Bucky, man. Bucky didn't make it. He was like the second one who got taken out. Yeah. This is the first one. No, this is the first one. This is the first one, yeah. He, he like, Steve? Steve? Bah. No, Bucky Bucky went down, dude. Yeah. Bucky was the first one. Like, did did we just lose? And then he looks right at Bucky. Uh, he turns into leaves. <laughs> the Winter Soldier became the Fall Soldier. <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm going to fire myself for that one. I'm so fired. All right, let's see. Uh, G-Sun has a question here. Why do the stones take out certain people and leave others? No, it's just half. Half, yeah. It, 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 no rhyme, no reason. It was half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, the, I mean... To, to why? I mean, it's up to the writers. They they, yeah. they picked and chose who was going to stick around, <laughs> yeah, who was going to be important. Yeah, because then after Chris, we saw like random people were dis- were disappearing. Yeah, yeah, random people. Oh, and I think we talked about this too. Like how I thought it was funny that in some interview recently, uh, Feige confirmed that like animals got uh, half the animals, half the animals, and people were upset about that. Like, but people are more upset that half the animals are gone now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, half the animals, plants. Half of all living beings. Yeah. Half the universe. Poof. Uh, I, I went to that website. Oh, was I spare? I, I, I was not. I, I died. Oh, I died. Oh, I was dead. I don't. I no longer exist in, got, in the you, universe. You got dusted. I got dusted. There, there's a pile of dust <laughs> somewhere in Pasadena. Half the flour to make bread. Damn. This is all the problem, though, right? Because like, he was complaining about half the resources. <laughs> I think Feige and them, they're just having fun with yeah. nerds. Uh, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, they're just fuck. This is them, like, we get to fuck with everybody. We get to pick and choose who dies. Because, I mean, they, I mean, yeah. They're just having fun at this point, just yeah. fucking with everyone. While, while we're freaking working our way, we're working our way to a year, a year down. Ah, oh, shit, I get a Facebook message that reminds me of something I wanted to talk about. I, I might have to save it for next week. Because the best show that no one is watching. Better Call Saul. Oh yeah. I feel like no one's watching that show. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go. We'll go more in depth into that next week. But it, it, I think it's the best show on television. Yeah. It it started late this year, and then like they really didn't promote it. I feel like you're doing a bad job. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. 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 Lamar giving us the questions. Giving us questions here. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Better Call Saul. It's the best show on TV. This. It's by the end of its run. By the end of Better Call Saul's run, it's gonna be better than Breaking Bad. Yeah. I I said it. I said it. Mm. Lamar asks on Twitch, you get one stone. Which stone would you get? Mm. Mm. Mm, that's a tough one. That is a tough question. What stone, which one? Mm. 
Selfishly time. <laughs> you gonna fuck up the timeline? Fuck yeah, I am! <laughs> Hell yeah, I am! Oh, Lamar says the reality stone. Yeah. <laughs> Tricking bitches has never been easier. <laughs> reality chip. Damn, you know, you know, that's true. You can change your reality. Why change time? You can change your reality. Oh, you got the space. You can just... Go space. anywhere. Go anywhere. You know, it's, it's, usually, you know, it's funny because whenever the whole uh, which superpower, I'd always... I mean, it's always either super speed or teleportation. I'm like, I want to... I want to be late more. Because <laughs> I'm honest. Yeah. You, you give me teleportation... You tell me to be there at 7 o'clock, I'll leave at 7.02. Yeah. I'll get there at 7.03. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I'd still, you give me super speed, I'll be very, I'll be very fucking Allen. I'm still going to be late. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ryan Tanaka asks a great question. What does the Soul Stone actually do? Hmm. So, in the comic book, I don't know... Obviously, in the in the movies, they might play around with this. They kind of gave what, Adam Warlock's origin to the Vision. Sort kind of. In the movies, right? Yeah, so. sort of. But uh, the, the, the Soul Stone, uh, that allows you to control the, the, the life and death, yeah. honestly. You can, mm-hmm. I, I've seen it been used to, you know, to kill and to bring people to life. It allows you access to the, wor- to, to the, uh, to the nether realms. Yeah. You, you, uh, you, you can access... Everyone who's died. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's how the, the you know the, when you get the whole gauntlet, you have control over everything. Where like the power gem gives you unlimited power. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's it's an endless source of power. Space allows you to be anywhere and everywhere whenever you want. Time obviously you control lots of reality. You can frame everything the way you want it to be. Uh, the mind it's like everything within the, the realm. Like you can control yeah. people. You can control everything. And like everything the, the the most complicated thing. Our brains is so fucking complicated. And then the soul. Soul gem. That, that's you know, our living being. Yeah. Uh, whenever Adam Warlock was always the possessor of the soul gem, and he would take people. He would take people. He, like when he killed them, their soul would go into the gem. Yeah. And then Adam Warlock could always have access to it. He'd go into the nether room and, and speak to speak to the dead mm-hmm. and confer with them. Th- yeah. Those who have been absorbed in, or those who have died or those who have been absorbed in the, in the soul world. Yeah. That, that's in the comic books. That's what the soul gem is. I don't know if they're gonna go that well, deep. That's a, we, I, it's very Jim Starlin, we, really deep water. I think we got a little hint of that, like when uh, we saw like the little, little Gamora at the end of the movie. Uh huh. And he was like, you know, in that realm where we saw you. Know, yeah, like, we saw the Casper when he's yeah. speaking to the to, to the, the young Gamora. Yeah. Uh, I have to give Lamar credit right here. It's like, <laughs> it's the reality stone. He's like. No, it's 10 inches. No, 11. No, it's 12 inches, baby. That's the reality you know. <laughs> it makes you a little Indian boy with a buggy, so you can call it Captain Planet. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the, you're saying, oh, the soul, gem, the soul Gem is like Captain Planet. It lets you call Captain... <laughs> I would fire you if I could, Lamar. But you could never be fired. <laughs> the Soul Gem allows you to call Captain Planet. You're, you're still fired. God damn it. But yes, the Soul Gem, I, I, it's very common. Yeah, they, they, like I said, they did give it a hint. Mm-hmm. Him talking to Gamora. Like, he probably was accessing Gamora's soul. He, yeah. Spoiler alert, Thanos kills Gamora to get the Soul Stone. I, I, I kind of like that whole little um, yeah. little twist. So to get access to the Soul Gem, you must sacrifice something that you love. Mm-hmm. And then Gamora's like, ha, 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 you love nothing. You're fucked. And he grabs her like, what? You love me? What? <laughs> There was a. Uh, that, that was probably the cold. I, honestly, that was the coldest thing in the whole yeah. movie. On it, and the, yeah. the, him, like, and that they gave him such depth. That that's probably I think the mm-hmm. most amazing thing. I mean, the, the the screenwriters and Joel Anthony Russo have done some amazing fucking things. Yeah. They made Captain America fucking interesting. <laughs> they made him fit in the modern world. They made Civil War make fucking sense. Yeah. In a, in a fucking two hour film, and now they made Thanos fucking compelling, and they like. They, they gave they, they gave you a reason to understand Thanos, which is fucking amazing, because he's just a fucking yeah. He, he, in the comics, he's just a fucking super sociopath. Yeah, who has a, the, has a self esteem issues. <laughs> what do you think will happen to Red Skull? I don't know. That was a okay. That's a big thing that we never got to talk about. Red Skull was in the movie. Yeah, he, he was the uh, he was stuck in the Soul World. Yeah, because you know he if, if you remember back to the end of Captain America: The First Avenger, he. 
grabbed a hold of the, of, as now we know, the space gem, <laughs> or a space stone. Yeah. The Teth, the Tetherite. <laughs> and he was like, ah! He got absorbed into freaking hell. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently on the, on, the, on the commentary, the Rooster Brothers said that uh, he's free now. And he's like wandering around the oh, space. Oh, really? Yeah. He's wandering around the space. Uh, Kia Fam, as opposed to wanting to fuck with it. No, he wanted to fuck death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the crazy, cra- you know, Thanos is such a crazy man. He wanted to fuck the living embodiment of death. Uh, in, the, in the Marvel comics, death is controlled by a lady called Mistress Death. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if she was happy, she would have a beautiful face. and she was pissed, it'd just be a fucking skeleton. She'd be like, he wanted to fuck female Skeletor. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and at, at some point in the comic, he actually did. He got mm-hmm. to be, he finally got to be with her. That, that, his motivation in the comic to kill half the universe was to make her happy. Yeah. So, at, at the end of the day, like most dudes, you're doing crazy shit to get laid. <laughs> I, real talk. You, I, I got the comic. <laughs> yeah. He was doing it to get with, 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 with death. He wanted to be with the lady who oh. controls death. And it was that, that whole creepy thing where like, she wasn't into it so he made a female version of himself. No, we'll see. The, the yeah. problem was <laughs> yeah. because he went and gathered the stones and got the thing the gauntlet, she's like, well, no, you're, you're, you're more powerful than me. Now, you, I have to serve you now. That, this, is, this is not... Uh, <laughs> is that why he's blue? Yeah, you got the old blue balls for not getting to fuck death. <laughs> yeah, like, he got the gauntlet yeah. and she's like, oh, no. I could never be with you because you're a higher being than me. And he's like, the fuck? And then, like you said, he creates a girlfriend. He uses the, the, the power of the... He's like, Pink, I'm going to make a girlfriend who looks like me. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, maybe all Thanos really wanted to do was fuck himself. He didn't want to fuck himself. And I would be remiss to not mention how fucking great Josh Brolin was. Yeah. Asked Thanos. Yeah. And in the special features, like, they, they made sure to... That was his face. Like mm-hmm. they were recording his face and just kind of put it on that big CG Thanos. Yeah. Like they, they they made sure they really got his fucking eyes, and he really was fucking committed to that fucking role. Like, mm-hmm. like he could have fucking mailed it in like he did with Cable. Yeah. Because he fucking mailed that shit in. Real talk. But he was fucking like, like he sat down with the Russos. They explained to him and like, yeah, he gave this version of Thanos the gravitas that the comic one. Comic one is just a super sociopath. Yeah. Then this one, he's. Insane, but he's inherently trying to save the universe as all the all the best villains. We've said many times on this show, on the multiverse comic show, the best villains are the ones who don't think they're the villain. They, they, they I'm doing nefarious shit yeah. because it's for the betterment of everyone. I'm the hero. The best villain is that he thinks he's the hero of his story, mm-hmm. and people stopping him. Those are the villains. Yeah. And then he really was in that and Josh Brolin fucking fucking nailed it man mm-hmm. it's fucking great I can't, I can't really I can't fucking wait for fucking we get to the, uh, Avengers 4 Infinity Gauntlet Endgame fucking Infinity Boogaloo yeah. Japanese painting that the Russos tweeted out I don't know if you saw that yeah they tweeted out a, a, a picture a painting name that made them think of, a, of Avengers Infinity War and everyone's like it's the name of the fourth movie really a long ass freaking Japanese title <laughs> is gonna be Avengers 4 uh, the, 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 the uh, Disney trusts the Russos so implicitly we can just name it whatever they want. Yeah. Avengers, fuck you. <laughs> we the, use our one. We use our one. <laughs> uh, the Avengers, pay us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Ah. Uh, I mean, it's fine. I was so worried we wouldn't be able to get an hour content out of me, but. Lo and behold, as it always is, yeah. you sit me down, you, you give me a few topics, and I'm just going to talk forever. <laughs> if you want to keep following the dialogue, make sure to follow us. If you're watching us on Twitch, like the One Afro Ninja, Lamar Harris, you can always watch us on Facebook as well. You can follow the page on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Dre GP Podcast. If you're watching on Facebook and you want to watch on Twitch, because I've been streaming a lot more. I'm going to be streaming on Twitch. And actually, uh, f- uh, Facebook has been trying to get me to do Facebook gaming streaming. And apparently, they're, they're trying to get in on the, on the, on the streaming action. I, I got a notification this morning. Like, please sign up for Facebook gaming. So I'm going to stream on both. And maybe I'll make a dollar. <laughs> if I can get through all the hoops and yeah, all the 
bullshit. All the bullshit, all the brass rings that they want me to hit. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to be streaming a lot more video games. Oh, the, I forgot to mention that today. Well, you know, maybe I'll mention it in closing and you'll be on the lookout. I bought a game for my Nintendo Switch this past uh, Saturday. No, not Saturday. I bought it last week on Thursday. I bought The Legend of Zelda. Freaking whatever the stupid name. Legend of Zelda, whatever. The one that came out on the Switch, which I said, oh, I'd never play that. Well, you know what? It was on sale. Uh, one, it was on sale. Two, I got to use my Best Buy discount. And three, I need more game content for, for our show here, where I'm going to be doing some more game content throughout the week, either on Tuesdays or Thursdays, whenever I have free time. I, I don't know if I can you know, make it a static show where like, I have to show up. Oh, like we show up here every Monday night, 8 p.m. Pacific. We show up every Wednesday night, 8.30 p uh, Pacific, to talk about comic books on the Multiverse Comic Show, mm -hmm. hosted by Pete Molini. I'm going to carve out some time, and I'm going to play Breath of the Wild. My brain, that's the way my, breath work, my, my brain works. It wasn't even on the screen. It was just like, I was like, oh, Breath of the Wild. So I'm going to try to stream. I'm going to hook up my Elgato, which I got from the one Afro Ninja. I bought it off him because he wasn't using his Elgato streaming thing. It's you, that way you can just plug in any game system into it or any game system with a HDMI. And you can put that to the computer and you can stream it and make it all fancy. So I, 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 as I was telling Sam, I told Sam Zia this and he was very surprised. What? I thought you would never play that game because I've always been very against three-dimensional Zelda. Yeah. But I'm going to try it. For the specific reason, if if I, if I enjoy it, good. If I don't enjoy it, then people can enjoy watching me get frustrated. Because I, I guess that's like everybody's favorite thing to watch in the show when I get incredibly frustrated. <laughs> I've been told this several times by different people. They, they love it when I lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> so I will be streaming Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild either through Facebook Live or through Twitch or through or both. Why not? Why not both? So that'll be happening at some point. I was going to tweet that out, but I'm like, no, I'm going to save the show. Nice. But yeah, I, I guess I didn't need it. Yeah, next week we're going to talk more about, as, as we get further and deeper into Better Call Saul, mm -hmm. we'll have a discussion about that and, and, and ask people, why are you not watching this show? Yeah. I, I literally, only, I, 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 you watch the show. My friend Judy Lynn, who, who messaged me during the show right now, is like, have you watched episode two yet? Because I'm still behind. I, I watched episode two before I got here. Fucking hey, good fucking show. Mm -hmm. Episode three was happening as I was leaving the house. I'm like, oh, I'll have to watch episode three tonight when I get home. Um, Better Call Saul. Amazing show. We'll talk about that maybe next week or as we get further down in the season. And I uh, think you had a very good point. They didn't really promote it very well. I think they just assumed everyone's going to watch it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'll save that discussion for next week. I don't want to I don't want to take away anything I can talk about next week. <laughs> follow, uh, follow us on Twitter. Follow me at Dre GP Podcast. You can follow Pete Molini at Nostalgic Comics. Um, Sam Zia, if you were here, you can follow him at Sam Z 57 b You can go to our YouTube page. I actually shall, should have free time now. To, uh, to work on that. I, I have a lot more free time in my life right now. <laughs> I'm wearing a fly. And I approve this message. Uh, so our YouTube content well, should improve. I, I really need to start moving a lot of these videos from, from Twitch on to the YouTube page. I really should have. That was my feet. Oh. <laughs> so, so spinning around. So yeah, follow us on Twitch. Uh, and follow us on everything. Uh, podcast listeners. And uh, as always, listen to us. If, if you can't watch, if you just want to hear me in your car, in, in the gym, if you want to listen to me talk about all kinds of ridiculous stuff, if you've missed previous episodes, I mean, hey, let's listen to Dre. You can listen on SoundCloud. You can listen on iTunes if you use iTunes. You can listen to us on Stitcher if you're a, an Android person. Yeah, there's lots of different ways to listen to the show. It's available. 82 out of the, or 80 out of the 80 episodes are available on Stitcher. The, two of the episodes are only on, on Facebook because of audio issues or whatever. Problems at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But everything is up to date for the last 78 episodes, I think. No. I don't know. <laughs> everything's up there. Almost everything is up there on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. So, that's the show. We'll see you guys. If you want to watch, talk about comics. Wednesday night, like Ryan Tanaka joins us. Like Mike Lee. They, they, they are double dippers. They watch they both shows. Dippers. Joanna Morales watches both shows. Mm -hmm. Wednesday nights, 8.30 in the p.m., and we're starting to stream that on Twitch as well. If you like comic books on Twitch, we're on Wednesdays now because I'm using my cell phone and not, not, not my PlayStation. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for everything. Uh, remember, interactive show. If you're listening to this on audio, join us. Facebook.com, Twitch.tv, search Dre's Geek Philosophy, and you'll find us, and you can interact like everyone did today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for interacting. Have a good night. Peace. Good night. Bye-bye, Twitch. <laughs>